important date. Welcome to my latest video. My name is Sarah and this is Emmy. Oh wait, this is Princess Emmy. I bought this fabric which shifts colors depending on the angle that you're looking at it about a year ago when I was working in my Elsa cosplay and it's been sitting in my stash waiting for this project ever since. I'm gonna be making a color changing Sleeping Beauty dress obviously because it's pink and blue and you know. <laughs> This dress has been done before by other people, but I wanted to put my own spin on it. I made a shirt just for this. <laughs> this is the version of Grimm's Fairy Tales that I grew up with. And In the fifteenth year of her age, the princess shall prick herself with a spindle and shall fall down dead. I'm sorry. What? I have a dog butt in my way, of course. And that's the fabric. It changes color depending on the angle. Uh, I have heard that it frays a lot and, and is a nightmare to work with. So I'm going to flatline all of the bodice and serge immediately. Hopefully that will help a bit. So I have six yards of this. I've calculated. I think it's about five yards for the circle skirts. So which means it leaves me with about a yard for the bodice. For the bottom edge I bought this gold trim. And also some pearls in gold for the top part. So I have some gold for piping left over from my Anna bodice. I started by cutting the big circle skirt. I did finally make a Sarah size circle skirt template, which is this orange piece here. I use whatever's available as pattern weights, usually my phone and my iPad. And I searched this immediately. I ironed it on low, which didn't get out every wrinkle, but it also didn't melt the fabric. So I'm minding my own business ironing here, and I notice there's a dead fly in my outlet. So I got the fly out, but it cost me my favorite tape measure. <laughs> ah. I added my own personal tag to the side seam. I made this a side split skirt, so there's an 8 inch gap on each side. For the waistband, I folded the top edge over twill tape. I like to try new techniques, especially when it won't show. I probably won't try this again for a circle skirt. I top stitched that down. And ta-da! An awesome skirt! This fabric is so much fun. I'm gonna let it hang on the mannequin for a couple days because stretch out because it is a circle skirt, so part of it is cut in the bias. So it's gonna be over here for a bit while I start working on the bodice. Although I do have an appropriate shirt on today. Also, because I did the side splits, it has the potential for pockets! Do you have something to say, Amy? I've been lining my princess dresses recently with fun princess fabric, but the only princess fabric I have right now doesn't have Sleeping Beauty on it, which seems, you know, pointless. So I think I'm gonna line it with this. I've had this in my stash for a while and I haven't used it yet. The only problem is that it's got glitter on it. And then I have some cotton canvas, I think, for the flat lining for this really flimsy stuff. L bodice pattern by... I don't know how to pronounce it, so I'm just gonna put it on screen right now. Our floors have radiant floor heating, and I did, in fact, line my sewing machine up with one of the hot heating pipes. You may have noticed this already, but I'm kind of a klutz. So I have now a princess band-aid. I cut out the bodice pattern three times, from a strength layer, a fun galaxy lining, and the fashion fabric or I will do that at some point. Good morning, everyone. It is day two, and it is all of one degree out... Oh, hold on. It is all of one degree outside right now, so you know. <laughs> I'm gonna work on the bodice today. I cut out the lining and the canvas and added all the marks yesterday. And I didn't want to touch the real fabric until right before I was going to sew because it's going to fray like crazy. Okay, I'm actually cutting the fashion fabric now. I used the canvas to cut out the final shape because I raised the neckline just a bit. Emmy snagged my sweatshirt! I quickly basted these layers together before serging. I pinned at the butt mar- Wow, the butt marks? 
Oh, hi, Princess Emmy. I pinned at the bust marks and eased the fabric around the princess seams. Very nice. I guess the lake is officially frozen. I guess I can go skating as soon as, you know, we shovel the rink off. Okay, so I finished stitching the bodice together and the lining together. I stitched down all of the seam allowance on the lining to make bone encasing. And for this one, I did iron it, by the way. It's just really plasticky. So I'm gonna do the cross stitching to keep these down uh, and flat. But I'm hungry and the dogs need to walk. So I guess this is a natural stopping point. I did a catch stitch here through only the canvas layer and not the fashion fabric to keep the seams flat. More on this later. Is it normal to sew with a dog in your lap? Bye, Emmy. Freaking crazy pretty material. I spent probably three hours that night stitching those puppies down. Oh my gosh, look what just arrived. This is gorgeous. Look at how pretty it is. Oh, I can't wait to use this. But I gotta finish this first. It is day three now, and I'm trying to decide whether I want blue sleeves or I could buy more white because the fabric that I currently have for the white uh, shoulder bit and the hip stuff is cream, which clashes with the white. Not so much with the blue, but I could also buy more white and more satin if I wanted that look. So obviously I made an Instagram poll because, you know, that's what I do in the design process. Check out my Instagram if you want to have a vote in what I do. And then I remembered that blue plus pink dye equals purple, which was the original plan. I'm gonna make some gold piping because I didn't want the lining to peek out over the white stuff at all. I cut two inch strips on the bias or 45 degree angle. Spot the mistake here. That's right, it's inside out. I put the zebra foot right up against the cord after making it right side out. I pin this to the bottom of the bodice the top is getting something special instead. I stitched it down, paying special attention to the point at the center front. And then I did a catch stitch again to sew the seam allowance down, but you can actually see the X-shaped stitches this time. For the sleeves, I grabbed my favorite stretch pattern and cut them before dyeing. Yes? Can I use your blender for the sugar? I guess. I doubt it works. That won't end well. And cut them before dying. I used a slip stitch to sew the lining on. I'm going all out on this bodice for some reason. I have been searching all over the place and I have absolutely no idea where the gold grommets are. I found the silver ones. This is the problem with moving is that everything got tossed around and I have absolutely no idea where they even could be. I know that they're the same size so I'm gonna do my measurements based off of these. I was gonna make a joke in the reveal part of this video where I prick myself on a pin, but I just stabbed myself for the third time. And by stab, I mean bleeding, not just poking. So, that's not so funny anymore. This is a thrifted wedding dress train. Choo choo! I drafted the, let's call it a peplum, parts on my dress form from a horribly clashing fabric, and also the shoulder thing. Sewing machine with black thread. Sewing machine with white thread. You may recognize this from my first videos before it died, but now it has a new motor and it's all good to go. It's happening again. Well, this machine is definitely not all better, so. I take back my celebration of having a dual colored machines going. Bias tape encloses the raw edges. Bye, Amy. Like this. I did a slightly less lovely whip stitch on the inside. K 
Can't forget the all-important belly rub step. Can't make a dress without that. I think this is one of the most beautiful bodices I've ever constructed. Look at this. <laughs> and the inside. I feel now like I wasted this gorgeous fabric because no one's gonna see it, but it's better than it sitting in my collection not being used. I added the gold and pearl trim along the edges of the peplum pieces. Emmy was also essential for stitching this. For some reason, that wasn't clear to me, but I'm just a human. So, it is day four of the Aurora project now, uh, but I decided, instead of sewing today, I decided that I was going to skate. <laughs> right now? Where's your puck? You lost your puck! Neighbors are fun. It snowed about six inches last night, so Emmy is downstairs melting and drying after having a lot of fun in the snow. Ah. Hey, watch it. Watch where you're digging there, Duggo. I think this is why everyone thinks that my dog is a puppy. I mentioned recently that she's nine and a half and technically a senior. I found them. Look, there are my gold grommets. Due to the aforementioned klutziness, I now have a grommet press. Oh my gosh. It's turning out so perfectly. I love the way the fabric, like look at the fabric. It just, it's amazing. It's perfect. Um, so this is all pinned together so I can't move too much, but I actually have some arm movement in this. So that's surprising. I love this so much. I don't want to take it off, but like I said, it's just pinned together. So I have to take it off to put the rest of the stuff on. Oh my gosh, I just, <laughs> look at this fabric. This is one of the coolest fabrics I've ever worked on, you know, until I get to that. I stitched on the gold trim and very carefully sewed it to the bodice, making sure that none of my stitches are visible. I hear it helps to not stab yourself while you're sewing white fabric. I wouldn't know. I whip stitched the peplum on the inside. The bodice is done. I have sewn in the peplums and the shoulder piece. Next, I guess I'm going to do the sleeves uh, and then I'm done with the bodice. I also whip stitched the sleeves to the inside of the arm side, aka armhole, not going through the outside layer. Yesterday, I went thrift shopping and I found these shoes, which I've been looking for for a while because I have these. So I want to make. Oh, come on. I've gotten like a dozen spam calls in the last 24 hours. It's getting a little annoying. I want to take these and glue them all over the shoe, making a Cinderella shoe that is pretty and wearable and cost me like 20 bucks, so. And this is exactly why we let circle skirts hang a couple of days. My dress form came with this tool to level skirts easily. Um, I tripped over it a couple years ago and it broke. So I have to do this manually. Because this fabric is so fray prone, I went with a shorter skirt length than usual. Also, for another reason that you'll see later. I attached horsehair braid to the edge of the skirt and flipped it to the underside. This will be held in position when I sew the trim on. Windows are being cleaned. I hand sewed the trim, which took forever.
Just kidding. It took two days. Or maybe there was another reason this took so long. Amazon goofed and they contacted me to say that the trim that I ordered is going to take another month and a half to get here, so I ordered a similar and temporary replacement. Close enough. Hi, yes I have a camera in my hand. Until March and the right trim arrives. I mean, it's not that bad. I'm not gonna leave it forever, but you know, it's the same color, it's about the same size. What do you think, Emmy? I thought the plane was coming. That's not a plane. Oh my goodness, it's really cold outside. There's negative something outside. I was gonna try and film the Sleeping Beauty reveal today, but uh, that's outside. So that might have to wait until it's, you know, positive degrees. <laughs> Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and keep an eye out for more. Bye everybody! Ow. How did that happen? <laughs>